Today is Tuesday the 11th of September 2018. I'm Stuart, the disembodied voice is Tom, the other disembodied voice is Ryan. <laughs> so let's do this. Hi, this is Cork. Oh yeah, whenever I'm in this universe, I always take time to listen to the Lark Book Show. So, in today's show, we talk to Ryan Hart about an immersive theatre show that combines LARP and site-specific dance. We also talk to, hopefully, uh, the Pitt family about their time at Curious Pastimes. So, let's get on with the show again. <laughs> right, so, hopefully that, that worked this time. Um... So professional podcasters. <laughs> That's something we definitely are. We we are professional Never. all the way. We can have to find <laughs> it. We can have to find another way of doing this because Skype is just so temperamental. Uh, we'll we'll look at that in the week. So uh, Ryan, hi, good to see you again. Hey, how's mm-hmm. it going? Excellent, mate. Excellent. Um, so you've got. Uh, something coming up, which is part of the Sinking Ship Creations uh, stable, as it were. Um, yeah, that's our next major show. Yeah, about an, an immersive theatre show that combines LARP and site-specific dance. Um, I think you're going to have to explain this one a little bit further, my friend. Yeah, I do, don't I? Uh, so what we're doing is we're doing the Mortality Machine. And what we really have been trying to do here in New York is look at LARP as a medium, saying this is a okay. medium of, uh, an artistic medium um, of expression. And that you can combine it with other artistic mediums. And we're like, where does it fit? What does it do? Where, what does it function like? And I've been talking to a number of other people. And when people ask me what it is, they describe it in a particular way. And I put the words in there so you know what you get. But for me, it's re- is it a LARP? Is it uh, an immersive theater show? What is it? I'm like, I'm not necessarily, I don't necessarily see the distinction between the two. But I haven't answered your question at all. I don't <laughs> that. As you know, I do. No, um, we are doing a show in New York. It's, uh, we're doing 22 performances. It's a two-hour and change show where you go into a basement there's something happened, and then stuff gets weird, if that makes sense. Uh, okay. And, and the big thing that it is is you're investigating um, some death that happened in a medical experiment five years before in a Canal Street basement here in New York City. Um, your loved ones that disapp- died um, as part of this illegal experiment. The doctor uh, is no longer with us. Uh, and you go in and you find this machine, the mortality machine, you Eponymous mortality machine, if you will. Uh, and from there, uh, the experience allows for various supernatural elements uh, to be represented and interacted with through contemporary dance. Uh, and what we really want to do is we want to really combine these two mediums um, in New York City into and deliver it to not only the LARP community, but also the general public, and we want to make it palatable to uh, both people who have never LARPed before and experienced LARP. Before. Okay, uh, right. I can, I, I can, I can you're just, like, I can just about see where, where, where you're going with this, uh, and what have you. Um, so, yeah, uh, the the sheer fact that that the 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 LARP, I see. So you got a LARP element, obviously. Um, that's part of a a theatre production. Um, I'm still not a hundred hundred percent sure where the interpretive or, or or the dance comes into it, though. Yeah, so let let's go down this road. So I'll tell you a story. That's what we do, right? We're LARPers. We tell stories. Yeah. So there I was. I was doing Project Ascension. So last time I was talking to you, we were doing Project Ascension. Project Ascension was designed um, around. We wanted to just put you essentially in a movie like Blade Runner. Um, so we were in the bar, everything worked, but the one thing that we realized in the middle of Project Ascension that didn't come off quite right was the band. 
because we didn't okay. want to make sure that we gave everybody the chance to see this band. We had the spectacle and this blockbuster LARP, and we had got this 80s synth band to come in. Um, and what we realized is that if I suddenly put a band in the middle of the LARP, everybody's going to be like, wow, that's really loud. I'm going to leave so I can keep on role playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're like, well, that was a mistake. <laughs> right. So we started thinking about it, and we started thinking, like, what is a LARP? Like, and uh, I have specific opinions on it, but I really feel like a LARP is walking around talking to people. It's about interaction, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That, to me, is a core. So when we were talking about it and we're doing it, uh, we're like, all right, we want to do another large show um, in November of next year, and we want to integrate other performances, other spectacles, if we will, but this time when we did it, we wanted everything to be interactive, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you would go and you would not be expected to watch the performer as an audience member, but there's some method of interaction with the audience member. There's some method of uh, perhaps uh, you could be transported, like the performance can take you into a different place. Um, when you see site-specific theater right now, that often happens. You get a private scene or you get some piece of information. It has to be something that helps you tell your story because you're still the, the protagonist, the main person in this world. And when we were looking at this, we were trying to figure out, well, what do we want to do? And when you're in New York City and you're doing immersive theater, we are so close to some of the most established shows in the world, like Sleep No More or Then She Fell. People in New York, when they think immersive theater, they don't think LARP, they don't think installations, they don't think augmented reality. The thing that people think about in New York is sleep no more, then she fell, I think, site-specific dance. So we realized if we okay. wanted to cross over and have this broad appeal, that the performance medium that we should focus on is site-specific dance. And once we started exploring that route, we realized now we have this physicality of movement, and we can use it as a communication tool um, to tell stories in an unusual way. And the way I explain it to people, I don't have short answers for it, I'm sorry, but hey. Uh, the way I explain it to people, have you ever seen a mu You guys have seen musicals, right? Oh, yeah. Like, everybody loves musicals, or they hate musicals, but everybody has strong opinions. But when you go to a musical, you have no problem with you're watching a musical, and all of a sudden, somebody starts singing, right? Yeah. Like, there I am. I'm Sky Masterson. I'm out on a date, and now I've had such a great date that I'm going to start singing a song. I'm like... I don't know about you, but if I'm walking down the streets of New York and all of a sudden we break into a song and dance number, I'm looking for the camera, right? But in oh, the yeah. musical, but in musical, you're used to it because it's part of what you expect. And what that represents is a heightened state of emotion, a heightened state of reality. So when you're doing a LARP and you're doing what you see is what you get and you have an effects budget and some people are like, well, that like costuming, we'll have like a monster made of foam, we'll have all this weird stuff. What we're doing is saying, hey, people are used to just weird dancers going or on and having this otherworldly quality from the other shows in New York. So if we're doing what's essentially uh, a story about um, death and what comes after, we can represent that supernatural element through dance and it'll be appropriately, not only will it be appropriately weird, but we can do what you see, what you get, and people will just accept it. Okay, yeah. I'm, so that's I kind how of the two came together. So, so, so basically you're you're trying to put together the best episode that that Buffy ever had, um, as a <laughs> as a lap, in my opinion. Yeah, kind of. That's yeah. a pretty good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um. By the way, uh, hi Luke. You've been there the entire time. We've seen you, obviously. <laughs> Hello. Hey, how's it going? Very, very well, thank you. That was a Thanks bit of a race from that. London. What? <laughs> that was a bit of a race from London. I <laughs> I got here though. <laughs> which is good which is excellent it's always good yeah it's always good so i mean i am do you do what i i i i really love the way that um larp as a medium is now opening where it it just literally went uh this is a game route this is a game route this is a game route um now it's it's kind of going uh, blossoming out into so many different types of avenues where people are going what if we tried this? What if we did that? You know, um, and I think it's fabulous. I must be honest. I, I love your idea. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'd love to star in a musical. 
There you go. You don't have to sing though. We don't have any. We don't have anything. That's we just have the thing. dancing. What? We don't want Stuart dancing. We don't want <laughs> Stuart dancing or singing. It's a bad idea. No, it's a great <laughs> idea. I know you're on about. No, it isn't. Oh yes, it it's is. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's what we want to do. We want to say we can expand, and we can. Put, I, I think when you say it's a game, I think sometimes we get really stuck in what we look at as this is what LARP is. Yeah. And I have a friend, uh, and he says we all have these deeply held LARP beliefs okay. that we have come to love and cherish. And letting go of those LARP beliefs and trying something new is very difficult when you've been doing it for a while. Very difficult. But that's what we're that's what we're trying to do over here. Like let's uh try something new. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Let me let me just say uh, bye to Tom. Tom is is said he's going to disappear now. N- now that Luke's here, he didn't want to leave me all on my own. Bless him. Oh, <laughs> I him. know. No, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody so, yeah. else did, but you know. Yeah, have fine. a good show, guys. Yeah, no worries, mate. You 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 rest we'll up, buddy. Now. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Um. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, so it's uh, what is that? Is someone going pop, 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 into the mic? <laughs> well, definitely <laughs> not us. No. <laughs> um, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. The um, yeah. So I, I am, I am really intrigued. Number one, yes, of course, I would love to be part of a musical. I think it would be absolutely fabulous. Uh, and also, the other part of me, of course, uh, naturally because we normally go through this anyway, uh, kicks into Monty Python, you know, but father, all I want to do is sing, you know. Um. <laughs> all I want to be is a lumberjack. <laughs> hey. It sounds better when be. you guys do it, because you have the actual accents. <laughs> <laughs> I start quoting Monty Python, I'll get kicked off. The show. <laughs> yeah, you will. No, no. <laughs> Nobody gets kicked off doing Monty Python because you know it's <laughs> universal. Like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. No. <laughs> oh, so, there's our rabbit hole. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, so um, now you've got it. This is a Kickstarter you started up for this, yeah? Yeah. So we have uh, next week we open. So what uh, what we're doing is we're doing a Kickstarter. Because the show grew once we developed the idea. Um, yeah, and because we're kind of doing this hybrid between LARP and dance, um, it's a very new medium. Uh, and there's a lot of options that we kind of have uh, to tell uh, this story. So because it's new, we decided we're going to uh, the story. We went to a very old story. The oldest story in the world that you can find right now is that about 40,000 years ago, there was a funeral. And when we did that, we're like, that's our first story. That's the first time that there was some idea that there's a continuation of life after death. First evidence we have that anybody ever told the story. So our okay. first story was about dying. So we get to tell the oldest story in the world in a new way because nobody's ever done this particular uh, hybrid of medium before, to my knowledge. There's probably somebody who tried it before. They'll reach out and they'll say, well, I, I did it. I'm like, well, let's, what did you learn? Um, but we get to tell this new kind of story. And when we decided that we're going to tell this new kind of story, we got some really great ideas. And we have some stuff that's really going to blow some people away. But it also grew from this idea of we're going to do a weekend LARP to, no, we want a lot of people to see this. We're going to do a theatrical run. We're going to structure this in a way where okay. you get tickets and you're going to do an entire thing, which is completely different on the business end than putting together a weekend LARP. Oh, 100% yeah, yeah. different. Yeah. I can imagine. So how, how do people actually go and find the, the Kickstarter for this? The Kickstarter is going to go up on the 19th. So right now we have our website set up and you can find a teaser article that we have there. that kind of explains what happened in the Canal Street basement. Um, and then come the 19th at 10 a.m., it's going to swap out to that Kickstarter. So uh, the okay. best way right now is to go to the Mortality Machine or to go to sinkingshipcreations.com and subscribe, and we will send you the link the moment it opens. Okay, no problem. So you hear that, folks? Uh, SinkingShipCreations.com. I do believe that's a creations with an S on the end. Yes, many creations. Many, many creations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can sign up for that, because it does, it does sound very, very, very intriguing. Uh, I do love the way that the people are now just coming up with new ideas for LARP, and how to use LARP in, in, in different things as well. 
Um, so I do think that's absolutely marvellous. Uh, so apart from that, what other stuff have you got coming up? Oh, we have, uh, we have a number of things. We just started working. Uh, see, this is where I get in trouble because my partner is uh, my partner's on the Jewish holidays right now. So he's not, he's not watching. Um, and he'll find it tomorrow. I'll be like, oh, no. He asked that question. Ryan's going to start talking. <laughs> we got a couple of really cool things planned. We're about to announce our entire 2019 season. The, the Mortality Machine is the first one we're doing. And kind of, kind of uh, the biggest departure from uh, traditional kind of uh, large-scale LARP. Uh, the second one we got coming up in May, you guys remember the 80s movie called The Warriors? Oh, yes. well, oh, Warriors, uh, you can't yeah, have to play. play. What a dreadful movie that was. Awful, what? but brilliant. Exactly. awful. I actually re-watched it and just, <laughs> no. That's your mistake, is you went back and watched it. You never you watched it. Never. You why do you, go, do, why do you go back and watch Highlander 2 while you're at it and see how you feel well, about yeah, that Yeah, but movie. Eyeliner suits me, so you can shut up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, no, no, come on. Now, Highlander 2 wasn't good the first time around. Let's be what, honest. did they made another one? I don't remember. I, they I, went I, up I to believe that. They, they had watched it before. They, oh, yeah, it was God. Oh my god! Yeah, I mean Highlander, the only the only Scottish Egyptian that ever walked the planet. The Scottish Egyptian was the, uh, yeah. the Scottish Spanish Egyptian. Yes, the one. <laughs> the Scottish Spanish Egyptian and fought with a katana because it was yeah. the nineteen eighties and kata- everybody needed a katana. I mean, it seems reasonable. Yeah, but- the problem is people had mullets. I mean, th- th- there was no real rationale to the eighties. <laughs> that was why. That's why. The, the entire Highland. Now I want to do a Highlander LARP. Now that we're talking about this one, because an now entire movie was all right. We're what? Co- it's like all we're gonna do is like take '80s tropes. Like we need costumes. What should we use? Let's use trench coats. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, they're gonna fight. How are they gonna fight? Let's use katanas. Swords, of course. Katanas. Yeah. Also, also, Queen does a soundtrack, so uh, we're yeah. good. Yeah, that's about the only really good thing. Well. No, but, I, I quite like Highland, I'll be honest. Everybody, that's the thing. But then you watch it again, like Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome. Have you guys watched Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome? Oh, yeah, that's bad. You love that movie, hasn't. right? You remember Just that movie, before right? Mel Gibson went mad. Oh, that was like 10 years before Mel Gibson went mad. No, yeah. I don't think he was ever saying, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> I had kind of look go. in his eye. Yeah, there you go. Like, you remember Lethal Weapon. Remember Lethal Weapon. All these well, shows. Movies. I've always wanted to sell Christmas trees as a direct result. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Shut up. There you go. <laughs> but all these eighties, all these eighties, we're we're stuck on the eighties right now. I got Pandemonium coming up in less than a, less than a month. Tickets are about to close for that actually next week, um, and that's an entire eighties Halloween romp that we're doing with six other studios. Cool. Uh, out here in the United States. If you know the people who did Armistice Arcane, Peculiar Crossroads, Mark and Kathy there, we got the crew from Event Horizon, um, Reverie Studios, we got uh, Hanging Lantern, which just did real royalty. Uh, I don't want to forget the last one. Uh, and then we got we have Imagination Collective, uh, who, you know, the Dystopia Rising, have the, the change in line coming up in Atlantic City. All of these groups uh, are coming together and working together to put on Pandemonium, which is this Halloween uh, LARP that's set in the 1980s, and we have a lot of cool stuff. Like, uh, we have one faction that you guys remember the Goonies, right? Oh, yeah. Or, like, and then you watch Stranger Things. You have all those movies, like E.T., and you have all those movies of the kids who are like eight, nine years old, and like, you get to go hang out with dead skeletons on a pirate ship, and you get to make contact with alien creatures and we're like oh aren't these great stories and then you're like those guys are going to need so much therapy later on right <laughs> yeah yeah. Can you yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. how i'm just like and then it's just like because then nobody's going to be like yeah and then et touched my finger and it healed the buzzsaw cut i'm like that's not gonna that you that's nothing you could tell your high school guidance counselor right well, so carefully i mean carefully you're exactly so we have an entire faction in this 80s game that is just the adult version, adult survivor of like a 1980s kids movie with all the problems that you would have so, like 10 years later. So Ready Player One. Ready Player One. Uh, we have, do we have, yeah, th- there is a, there is a kind of an 80s gamer culture in there one. I can't cool. talk too much about that one because we have a twist on that. We have like, 
um, the eighties version of like the eighteen mates MacGyver. Um, <laughs> We have an 80s goth cult with my favorite name of any faction. Uh, and the name of the 80s goth cult, if you guys remember, I like I don't know how many of your audience love the 80s, but this, the name of this one is The Merciful Cure of the Nephilim. And, and I'm like, oh, wow. And I'm like, that's just a name right there. We have, uh, we have a 21 Jump Street faction that we have in there. So we have all of these like 80 trope that we're kind of throwing in. Well, there you go. So. There's, there's, th there's one for the audience. Then, uh, give us a big thumbs up. If you liked the eighties, <laughs> cause I know I did. I gotta have a thumbs I, up for that. I, there we go. You know, I, I tell you the, the one LARP that I always want to write, I tell people, I don't like working with other people's IP, but the one IP that I absolutely want more than any other IP in the world is I want to run a team man in the masters of the universe. Bar. <laughs> half the crowd laughs the other half needs an explanation so. yeah, no. <laughs> oh excellent stuff uh, ryan mate well well i must be honest I, I i wish you all the best with uh what's coming up because it all sounds marvelous do keep us informed and send us stuff uh especially with the the the, the bigger laughs and i do want to uh, you know if you do film or you do something with the the theater LARP with, with, with the dance, uh, we'd love to see that. Please send it our way. We're going to have on the Kickstarter, we're going to have one of our rewards, should be, should be, um, that we're doing putting a GoPro on somebody during a dress rehearsal, and we're creating a found footage film, a la the Blair Witch Project. Nice. Again, some people laugh, and the other happy an explanation. But yeah, so we'll def we will definitely get you that one uh, so that you can show people. And then watch for the trailer to drop, too, because I will tell you, our LARP trailer, um, we, pro we, we we did something special with this one that nobody's ever seen before. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> Just so marvelous, uh, mate. So uh, tell people again how they can actually get in contact and find the information out. The, actual, the best place right now, um, we do have the website up um, as we count down to it, the mortalitymachine.com. Um, however, the best place is sinkingshipcreations.com. That's many creations with an S. And sign up for our mailing list, and we will get you. Uh, we generally only send out updates when we have something for you. So we're sending out a big update. Um, we're probably going to drop the trailer this week and then send out uh, the Kickstarter next week. So. Cool. Excellent. That is superb. Well, thank you very much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure as normal. Uh, you are more than welcome to uh, hang out with us while we talk about other things. Uh, or if you've got something to do, we also don't mind if you disappear as well. So it's entirely up to you. I'll probably, I think I'm still frozen, so I let people, uh, you know, see you guys a little bit more clearly and drop my, uh, drop my frozen half shadowed face. So <laughs> let it go. I do need to <laughs> let it go. <laughs> I also need to say that Chris Butcher, your comments are your comments are are brilliant. It's a shame they never made a Predator versus Alien. So. <laughs> yeah, this. Oh, white. oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I am looking forward to the new Predator movie, only the sheer fact it's a Predator movie. It doesn't even have to be good, I'll be honest. There you go. Wait, wait, let's it's be... It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger in it. Does it have Arnold Schwarzenegger in it? Oh. I have no idea. I don't, I don't even think it care. does. If it oh, bleeds, so we could in kill it. it. <laughs> Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. Get to the chopper. There's a YouTube yeah, video a of a woman who remade the entire Predator movie starring only her and her cat as a Predator. <laughs> well, sounds fair. There you go. I can see that. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for having me. Right. No worries, Ryan. You have a good one, buddy. See you soon. All right. Take see care. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Right then, so... so that's just me and you now. It is. It is. Dun, 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 dun. Now, I'll tell you, the, the reason why we've got this here is because if I put my speakers on... I don't think we'll stop hearing the how round, if you know what I mean, carry on going on. Yeah, so yeah. you might have to speak up every time you clean so easy you can hear you too. What? What'd you say? Okay. What? Right, and what? so um, uh, for those of you who who do or do not know, I'll, I'll kind of explain. Um, we yep. went to the Curious Pastimes game in August, which is the renewal of Magic. That's their, their, their biggest August game, as it were. Uh, and we took along the entire Pit family. Uh, so Luke, Izzy, Charlie, and of course, Bex. Um, 
so we thought we'd get them on tonight uh, as well i mean luke's normally on anyway uh to actually talk about their experiences uh etc now look if you wouldn't mind do me a small favor if you can shimmy across uh the, the one way and then you can get izzy in a bit further there you go that'd be better that's better now now that's we can better. see her like this she is there you are so um if you want to let's, let's start off with the uh <sighs> I won't say how did you find it because I know you'll say we followed the sat nav. So, <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I know you too well, Pitt. Um, <laughs> so, um, what we, what are your thoughts? What are your experiences, etc.? Talk us a little bit about what happened when you kind of got there and so on and so forth it's it's um it's very difficult because uh cp is probably it's big no yeah i mean it's you know, well <laughs> I, I suppose it's 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 a big larp it's one of the bigger larps. i mean bear in mind that uh balrog gaming which we've been going on is almost like a, a, a tenth of the amount of people that are that are there so you know we've gone from having a, a kind of like a, a lot which had 30 like 40 thousands yeah um and so that whole uh that that whole change in you know kind of uh, the size was was kind of was kind of well it wasn't scary but it's quite awe inspiring because you see how much has to actually go into you know just making it happen yeah 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 and if um if, if when we originally if i if i stop you there a, a, a second Luke, i mean i I know you and I have done other bigger LARPs before, yeah. right? you know, whether it be uh, The Gathering and things like that, yeah. right? I kind of want to uh, hear a little bit more probably about it from Izzy, right? Who has gone, yeah. who has only ever seen like the 30, 40 person LARP, yeah. right? So what were your experiences, first of, of all, of going to a LARP, which had uh, probably a thousand plus people? It's big and I'm only used to have like three children with me. So having loads of children, like loads of children come up to me, I was like, okay, um, uh, 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 I don't know any of you. <laughs> and especially you don't realise how many children are there until you get to the child's event, which I'm only used to about three or four kids being there and me being the eldest. Well, there's ones about 16 there and I'm just like, Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. one of the youngest now. Um, but, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, but how, how about things like um, obviously the sheer volume of, of people that are there, the the different costumes, the the different factions, all that malarkey. How, how did you kind of take it all in in that respect? Well, I have seen loads and loads and loads of costumes at Balrog, but when you see loads of people you kind of like that's a good costume that's an even better costume that looks so realistic what 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 are you meant to be it looks good yeah eh. yeah 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 i saw cat from red dwarf as well which i was like i know you from somewhere red dwarf so I have to rewatch the series now, obviously. Obviously, yeah. He was really good because he came yeah. up right at, um, at one of the initial um, fights that we had. Yeah. He just came to the front gate and just announced himself. He did this wonderful twirl. Yeah. And, and just announced it. Hi, Kate. Um, <laughs> man, if I stay here for a while, I don't want to get my sword weight. Oh, yeah. But it was brilliant cool, cool, cool. because he kind of fitted in, didn't he? Mm. And... <laughs> And there were so many people there. I mean, you could you could spend the entire weekend just looking at people. I think, yeah. you know, and all just of the, the wonderful spectacle. costumes. Yeah, I think I think you could just go around and go to each of the camps and and, and just watch. And yeah. and, and you, there'd yeah. be plenty of plenty to see there. Yeah. Chris actually wants to know: Is he? Um, did you did you job the Minotaur on the path? <laughs> Not quite sure what job. So means. did you fight the Minotaur in in the kids thing? Tried. You didn't kick anyone again, did you? I've told you about the violence group. <laughs> She's got to stop. Yeah, tried. Yeah, no, the, yeah, she died. She's no, not no, going to admit to anything, Chris. <laughs> not now we've put her on there. Yeah, no, the 
the Minotaur, of course, was was, was part of the friendly crew, and we'll use that term loosely because I still, you know, I I followed that story, right? And I'm not 100 percent sure, as an adult, right, that that um, filmed and watched the kids' event, whether the people that came along to say, "Can you help us out? Because we need your help," right, were actually the good guys. There's a part of me that's thinking they're actually not the good guys. <laughs> And I yeah. kind of like the fox. Yeah. No, because I was like, I was nobody's friend. Because people saying, are you our friend? I was like, I'm no friend, no foe. Because I'm just like, if these guys turn out to be very bad, I'm not their friend. Because I've just said, I'm no friend, no foe. So, I didn't say I was their friend. So, if the fox turns out to be good, I didn't say I was his friend either. I just said, I wasn't friend or foe. But you fought everyone then, right? <laughs> yeah. You've got I kicked everyone. somebody in the nads. So, nice. So, oh, good job. So basically, is he saying that at that point she was Switzerland? Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. um, so apart from that, how how did the weekend kind of it, it evolve for you then, as a family gelling together and, and going off and doing things? And I, I know, look, you, you managed to get to do a bit of monstering and yeah. things like that as well, which I know you thoroughly well, the, enjoyed. The, the great, I think that one of the, it's not a drawback. And, and I'm, I, but what I will say is that these two, uh, Charlie and Izzy being nine and 11, are still on the, there's a very big grey area. For, for them, it's that they're at the cusp of wanting to go and fight but can't, and but understanding and, th- and feel as if they're missing out. And I suppose that four years before they could probably go and do something feels like an eternity. Yeah, because we're teens at the moment. Mm. It's a mix between child and a teenager. So we're teens. So we're kind of like, we want to do this. Oh, wait, we can't. Mm. Yeah. And when it comes to the, um, the actual fight... And the kids battle, it's more around the younger ones and not the older ones. Because we're just like, we've got you in two shots, two shots. And all the little ones are having a great time where we're just like. But I I don't think I I, I would like to add something now that (laughs) when I get the film footage together, um, I'm quietly going through it. uh, I I captured the little the little ones. They were brutal. They were absolutely they were. brutal, right? Where oh, is he? Was she yeah. the one that started piling in on that poor he? woman? Where, where he, I, I don't know what it was. Where, but... Izzy, Izzy and Charlie would, would would sort of do the blows. The person would go down and then move on to the next one. Now there were some little kids there that were just hammering crap they when were they were. The booty, <laughs> they? Yeah, it was brutal. And and it's um, I, I suppose you know. I mean, I think you can't. Well, on one hand, I felt that, you know, that, that it's a progression thing. So I think because I've, I've read some stuff now that yeah. they are they're really looking at it now. Uh, they're, they're, they're trying to make sure that there's something for all ages. And it's it's incredibly hard to do because you've got to try and entertain everyone and, and you, you're never going to do that. Um, but you've got to look you've got to protect the smaller children and, you know, kind of the, the, the nine to 14 year olds um, are going to feel almost left out. But then they can't join the, you know, many of the big battles, understandably. So I think there, there was that there. And I know Charlie, he really wanted to go in and, you know, kind of have a fight with everything. But having said that, what I, lo- I really liked about Curious Pastimes is that they were they were very inclusive. So as a family, there was lots that we could do together. You know, um, there were things that for obvious reasons we couldn't do. And, and I felt that we, co- we can't really give it justice because in essence, it was the first year and people were trying to understand who we were yeah. as much as we were trying to figure out how to how we were going to fit in as, as as a family and i can imagine that uh, you know as you keep on going every year that then becomes a little bit easier izzy would then find friends that she could go and do her thing with and then we could go and do monster in and you know kind of <coughs> becky could go and do her thing as well and and charlie you know could, would find his feet um so to to say that maybe there wasn't enough there is an unfair statement I feel that what it did highlight was that um, <laughs> there is a lot of potential and, and CP, yeah. like many of the big events, have really embraced this. 
and, and you can't deny that because there's a lot there's a lot going on there's always something going on um whether the kids were going off at 10 o'clock and they were going to the senate and they were they'd got something to do there, there was far more in inclusion for children in cp than there, there kind of is with balrog or to a certain degree with the Lorien trust but i mean things change so there's no just you know i'm not i'm not pitting one against the other um but i i, I really enjoyed it i had we had a good time i mean i love the monstering yeah. And, and I managed to really get to Pippa as well because we were in a melee and I just stood up and said, really, is that the best you've got, you bunch of pussies? And then they all ha- and piled in again, which I thought was amazing. So they just pulled me to the ground. Um, so I had a really good time, uh, you know, kind of uh, with, with, you know, and met people like Pippa as well, who, you know, kind of heavy in the, the lions, I think Pippa's in, isn't she? So um, that's one to go for next time um so it it was wonderful in that respect and it really is a very social thing but i mean we you you were drunk half the time anyway weren't you in the crimson moon or was that <laughs> me? i can't remember that was me now was I'm, I'm a good drunk actor oh you're a good drunk actor that's <laughs> as right. you can yeah, see you, at my you've got Christmas awards concert. with that yeah 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 um, let's not mention that no no but also i we had the the nicest gift of the senate and that was for the whole of the weekend our parents couldn't tell us to shut up in or fact, kill us. In fact, it was any adult. No adult at all oh, yeah, it was no could, adult. Actually, could actually tell dad the kids like, to shut sh- up. Sh- yeah, because Dad was like, shut up, and I said nothing. They had, and they had free choice. They had free reign. You couldn't even put your hand over the mouths or apparently slit their throats. That was wrong as no. well. No. Which I felt was a bit much. <laughs> but then I, I mean i thought it, it was good i mean you know I, I think in hindsight if we were doing it again i would like to go and camp with the wolves our tent's too big yeah it, well, i mean it, it was <laughs> but i mean ultimately i i think i think that we kind of missed out on some of some of the stuff there yeah. um but there was a reason why we were camped where we were you know um so i you know that that wasn't a problem i love the crimson moon they're always ice um the food was fantastic. There was there was loads of shops there to go. We bought well, my my sword failed. It did, and um, it did. I mean, the whole thing. And he, in fairness, the guy was really, really um, nice. very diplomatic about it as well. He said, "Look." And the whole thing had just come away. So I went, oh, I've got to go get myself one of them. So I got myself a good old wacky stick. Um, and then Charlie wanted one as well. So, uh, you know, we were fighting. But the Wolves faction were incredibly friendly, weren't they? they yeah. They, they kind of included us in everything. They introduced us. Mm. And and at first, because I don't know, because we, we, we didn't tell them that we were who we were. We just thought as a family we'd kind of just go in and, yeah, and yeah. see the response they got and we were only about five minutes before someone came up and said are you new you know and so they were very very engaging and i reckon actually in fairness to the everyone there i think i don't think it would have mattered what faction you went to i reckon they all kind of would have gotten <laughs> gay go wolves yes go wolves chris nice I, one i go wolves i think there's a little bit of a battle going on here uh, chris is saying we have mead loki and ultra violence uh, the lions have gin and emo no oh, we have odin we have odin odin, odin. odin and thor yeah and, but but pippa goes Jason. but pippa goes of course but it's the best emo at cp <laughs> 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 but we have the best satan at <laughs> me yeah and um i mean ultimate do you know what it was, it was great because um i mean like, like i say i think it was a lot to take in and, and yes. you know and, and and i we tried to do everything so i tried to do a bit of monstering you guys were doing the um the, the you know the, the kind of the young adults kind of stuff yeah but um, we also did a bit of monstering because we went around trying to find one about the sleeping one uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. the lions were like i think they were kind of freaked out they just went we know somebody <laughs> this way <laughs> yeah. so i had to spit at everybody who had an axe and i had to uh to like kind of go where is she like speaking short sentences but in a whispery kind of voice oh, so That's it so was cool. <laughs> yeah because you, you were playing a druid basically weren't you 
Yeah, I, but I think the, the whole thing is it's just uh, like many of these these larger larks, you always fear, don't you, that you are just um, you just part a little, of the bulk. A little cog. Yeah, yeah, you little you know, or a big fish in a small pond or a small fo- a pond in a big fish. I don't know. Yeah, no, um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, but I actually I genuinely felt I genuinely felt wherever we went, we were made very welcome. Yeah. You know, it was it, and it is very much a family a family thing. I, I do I do yeah. genuinely believe that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, mean um, I I agree, you know, I, as I was going around basically doing a fly on the wall document documentary uh with yeah. yourselves, um the one thing that I was noticing is uh the sheer fact of the inclusion uh pretty mm-hmm. much wherever you went was 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 top notch uh, as as they say. Um, yeah. And so I suppose, I suppose to to criticise it, I, I, you know, you almost feel a little bit guilty about it. But one of the things I suppose we, we've got to say is how, how and what we found. But in fairness, I found the administrators, they couldn't do enough for you. Um, and they were very patient with you as well, given that they've probably got thousands of people all yeah. asking exactly the same question. Um you know, um, I thought they were they were very engaging. Um, the people are lovely anyway, and, and you, you, you know, kind of the refs were really good. As so I had a really and and I, and, and I, what I'm not going to do is criticise Lonnie and Trust and pit the two against each other. I'm not going to do that. But I did have quite a bad experience with one of the refs at, at Lonnie and Trust, and and it, it kind of you know it really stuck in my throat. But I thought the refs at CP were very fair. Um, they did regular feedback, so it was all about the experience. Yeah, and they were they were very reasoned in, in that front, and so they'd really kind of thought about how they were going to do a fight, um, and they kind of let you you know be who you are, and as long as as long as you didn't do anything overtly stupid, they they were cool with pretty much whatever you wanted to do, and I thought that was really good, and I thought it was wonderful how each faction did their own little bit of monstering. Yeah, and everyone, yeah, so like everyone did it. Yeah, yeah, everyone did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, the, and, and, the, the the other thing that I I always like about the refs and what have you, uh, and anybody that's uh, in a position of power, I suppose, or, or of of information, um, if they don't know something, they they do actually physically go and find out whether it's by the radio, they know who to talk to, they get the information, yeah. they actually come back to you. It's it's you're not fobbed off then, uh, as in like no, you know, or nobody makes stuff up on the spot. No, and it, and it was great because we had some fab refs. Um, yeah. And but I think they do the rotation because otherwise you'll just get people going, I'm going to monster the whole time because I want to. And there's going to be other people who are just like, I'm not going to do monstering because why? Well, I've and got I to say, though, I've got to say, I've got to get Pippa back because she can wallop. <laughs> she 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 got me good. Shrek, I I think, I, so I need to get her back now. There's there's got to be this little thing now. I'm gonna aim for a Pippa. I'm gonna do this for you. <gasps> you can't do that. That's rude. Um, no, I did it for Pippa. Oh, the, she's um, not really sad. She doesn't understand. I mean the the way the way they actually sort of uh, get the other factions to monster uh, to attack yeah. the you know the 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 uh, other factions uh, as it were. I think it's a clever idea because you have a dedicated monster crew, but of course that monster crew can only do so much uh, throughout a weekend without being absolutely yeah. naffed. So by getting the player base then of one particular faction to be the monsters for another faction is a genius idea because suddenly you've yeah. got a massive monster crew uh, that goes in rotation. And they um and they had some really uh, great actors. Uh, really thought about things like the, the Senate, the tents, the setup on the library. Was yeah, really, really was good. Really good, yeah, yeah. 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 And that, I mean, it's been going for quite a while, so you, you kind of expect that level, uh, you know, I suppose. But I was quite, I was really impressed with it. I mean, I think one of the things that um, I love doing is, and, and, and I want my children to experience this, I suppose, is that the effort that people go into, it's worth going. It, it is worth going and just seeing. Yeah. But CP isn't the only, per, you know, kind of thing, the, the event that's going on. So that's what I love about LARP book. And, 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 and I can't say enough to any of the patrons and the people who are listening here, you know, do get us to come and see because we'd love to come. Because the one thing I wanted my children to, to really enjoy is LARPing because it's so much fun. You know, you, you, you know, I can't say that enough. And the kids have really come out of themselves as a direct result. I feel that they are who they are. I'm a bit more creative and I like I kind of 
if I have to do like a story or a comic or something, I'll kind of put myself in a situation and see what would my LARP character do? What mm. would what would she do as my character? What kind of questions would she ask? How would she interact? Yeah. How would she do this? How would she do that? Who would she talk to? Who would she just ignore and go, nope, I don't want to talk to you. Mm. But you, on the other hand, yeah, it it, it, it definitely sort of helps you with your with your creativity um, aspect of things, doesn't it? Let's let's be honest, because yeah, you, you're placed in those situations uh, and what have you. Um, so, uh, summing up, then, uh, how would you say your experience was? Ten out of ten. Yeah, I, I know you guys really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think from from point of view. I, I want to keep on going. I, I think that that's the one thing I do. I, I'd love to go to all LARPs, if, if I'm honest. You know, there's time is, is the issue, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so I thought from a point of view of Curious Pastimes, it is obvious that they've <laughs> really, they've really considered what it is they wanted to achieve. They're very focused. Um, and it when it works, you know, and you can tell. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's all there. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, Chris is saying, in, you know, Chris is saying, uh, you know, on a serious note, over the last six to seven years, Curious Pastimes have really lifted the game with investment in props, mm. customer service, and the players have worked harder and harder with their kit and camps. I mean, yeah, yeah. and and you can see that. You can absolutely yeah. see that. And so, yeah, I, I mean, it was it was a very very good experience all around. I mean, you know, kind of, I know Charlie was a little um you know kind of apprehensive about going because he's only experienced a smaller lot but he, he I just think, doesn't like dressing up well i think he's going through like like all kids they go through stages where they may feel uncomfortable so he needs to be there he needs to see everyone else around it you know kind of doing the same thing and then he'll want to do it um yeah. and like like many kids i suppose this is the thing isn't it is that if they're brought up with lot they'll always love it yeah um but if they come in at a, you know, a young age and, and, and they can't quite see it, well, then it makes it very difficult. But my two, I'm very lucky that they've really embraced it and they love it. Yeah, because I've been doing it since I was born, basically. Basically, you have? Yeah. Well, we, you were six months when we first took you. No, to... I was like literally in mum's belly. Yeah. 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 And then... So... I've yeah so it, it, from that point of view, it, it is really good and you know it was it's uh like i say i can't say enough about it and there's loads of photographs and um the little interviews we've got which have you know they're, they're, they're wonderful to kind of look back on um i think it would be really great wouldn't it to go around and maybe do that review for a few other larps as well yeah and we'll all just pile on down there and we'll do something similar because i think what that does do is it i i think what we should do is celebrate how hard curious pastimes actually work i mean it's and it's so much effort that goes into it yeah. and you know from everyone from the people who were even just cleaning the shower rooms and making sure that all the infrastructure was in place everyone had the job and everyone did it but more importantly they did a really good job of it yeah and so you know, so from from that point of view, you got to celebrate the success that they uh, of that all that hard effort and all that work, and it was wonderful to be a part of. Um, you know, and it would be lovely to go and do other LARPs as well to celebrate all the effort that other people go through. You know, whether that be green cloaks and whether it be, you know, kind of um, stuff that Gideon does, and you know, kind of um, and go go to those and, and actually get a full on experience of what's actually going on. Mm. And I, and I'd love to be a part of that um and you know kind of i think the thing is that whenever you do this kind of thing all the footage and all the photographs and what have you that you have to kind of wade through it's four or five weeks before you can sit there and go yeah, no. well, well i've got a 20 second video for everyone pretty, pretty, pretty <laughs> you know? much yeah you, so, uh, it, it is but like i say it was it was it was a, a it was a it was a beautiful moment and i met some really wonderful people um and you know i i it, it, and I'm saying this, I suppose, uh, very sincerely, that, that, that I felt you've been to Curious Pastimes, you've always raved about it, and I've gone, yeah, all right, okay. But I actually was, I was really impressed with what I saw. So anyway, and I think, I know Becky's, you know, kind of out and about at the moment with, with Charlie, who's decided that he doesn't want to talk anymore. Um, Ever. But he's unsociable. He's antisocial, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, but we did, we had a great time. We yeah. we did and, and 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 in fact actually Charlie's still talking about it now. Um, oh, and I think you know, and well both of you are and you know and I think it, it is it's good. 
you know, it, it was it was a wonderful thing. It was really, really, really fun. Cool. Can't wait for next year. Yeah, cool, excellent. That is that. Look, you are brilliant, and I kind of uh, I'll echo those those sentiments then in the fact of uh, that it's always very well run. It's always very very well put through. Uh, mm. All very you know put together in 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 that respect. Uh, so I think we'll leave it there for tonight, as we're now creeping up on the hour mark. <laughs> I'm amazed how quickly an hour goes by, to be honest with you. Um, thank you for everybody who's watching. I do have to say uh, one other thing, however, and that, of course, that uh, Pippa actually said, uh, bring it, Pitt. Yeah, I know. I was going to say that. Did she say that? Yeah, she oh, yeah. Where did she say that? If, can you go down? I don't know. Did she actually say that? Yeah, bring it, you, bring it, Pitt. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, you are so going to get it. So on that note, uh, a big thank you to um, all of our lovely patrons uh, who make it a little bit easier to keep this show going. Uh, if you'd like to get in contact with the show, just email contact us at larpbook.com. Is there a topic you'd like us to discuss or something cool you saw or fancy writing an article for the website? Then just email the show contact us at larpbook.com. Uh, the theme music was written by Bradley Parsons, and you can find him over at fiverr.com forward slash Bradley Parsons. Uh, now, going on with the Patreon, um, if it if you've only got a dollar a month, right, it does help us out massively, right? Because if 50 people put in a dollar a month, right, well, that's $50 a month, if you know what I mean. Uh, so don't think that your your one dollar won't make a difference. Uh, it, it it will. <laughs> it's simple as that. Uh, and to actually get us to different LARPs and what have you, uh, it does you know involve a lot of money. Right now we're all just putting our hands in our pockets and going for it. Yeah, uh, we're very lucky. Sometimes we're actually given uh, free tickets and what have you to go to. But it's, there's still petrol and everything else and food and blah blah blah. So if you can help us out, that would be fan tabby dozy uh we do have a shop uh over on uh the facebook uh, site uh so have a look at that you can buy mugs and things and what have you uh you can listen to the podcast obviously on itunes stitcher youtube twitch and Larpbook media just search for Larpbook and you will find it uh again the email is contact us at larpbook.com so send in your reviews or any questions and we'll pick it up that way uh, the website is larpbook.com and of course you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, etc. You know, just go look for us. Uh, of course, other than uh, Instagram, Instagram of course is the larpbook. Let's not open that one again. So uh, don't forget to give us a five star review on whatever podcatcher you use and show notes uh, when they're all done can be found over at laughbook.com i'd like to say a massive thank you to ryan for being on tonight uh, and do go and uh, search out sinking ship creations is that sinking ship or sinking ships can't remember now but sinking ship creations you'll find it i'll, I'll put the link in uh, later on <laughs> uh, thank you very much to luke and izzy for coming on as well uh, absolutely marvelous to hear your thoughts and thank you to everybody that was watching the show as well so i'm stuart that's luke that's izzy uh, ryan's gone so we'll just say uh, good night everybody and happy laughing bye 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 bye